We're going to start today by building the code to run our stepper motor. So create a new project and then in your top design window go to ports and pins and we're going to get four digital output pins and place them on the screen. Next, double click on each one of these pins to change its settings. Make sure it's a strong drive and uncheck hardware connection. Also, we're going to change the names of these pins. Change the name of the first pin to A, the second pin B, the third pin name C, and the fourth pin name D. All of these should have hardware connection unchecked. Next, let's assign these pins. Let's set A to pin 1, 0, B to pin 1, 1, C to pin 1, 2, and D to pin 1, 3. Let's go write some code now. Start by cleaning up the code a little bit by deleting all of these things that you don't need. Inside the for loop, all we're going to do is set the values of each of these pins. The first thing we want to do is set pin A high and set all of the other four pins low. So you need to add these four write statements to do this. Immediately after we set pin A high and the other pins low, we're going to add a delay statement. To start out with, let's make this delay be equal to 10 milliseconds. Now, the next statement is almost exactly the same as this one, so we can copy these lines and then paste them. The only difference that we want to have in the next four iterations of this code is that we want to set a different pin high each time. So after our delay we want to set pin B high and the other pins low. Then in the fourth or third block of this code we're going to set all of the pins low except C. And finally, in the fourth block of code, we want to set all of the pins low except for D. Now go ahead and program the PSOC. This is all the code that we need to get our stepper motor to rotate in a particular direction. For this lab, you need the following parts one of these little stepper motors with five wires, a stepper motor driver that has a chip on here that looks very much like the H-bridge chip we've used in the past for our DC motors. In fact, that is what this chip is. It's not the exact same model, but it's a chip that will allow us to turn off and on a higher voltage and current using digital output pins from our PSOC. This driver uh, board also has these four LEDs labeled A, B, C, and D that we can use to debug and make sure that our code is working correctly to turn on and off the four poles of the stepper motor. The board also has a terminal for connecting the five wires of the stepper motor. You also need to have a total of six jumper wires that are female on one end and male on the other end. And you need your PSOC. To start with, go ahead and plug in the stepper motor to the stepper motor driver board. You'll notice that this terminal has these two little slots on it that match up with two um, little bumps up that are on the, the terminal for the stepper motor. So match those up and plug in the stepper motor. 
Now, for now, we're going to use for the power VDD and ground from the PSOC. If we wanted higher torque abilities, we could connect this power source to an external power supply that would allow us to, to uh, pass greater amounts of current through the chip. But for now, that's not necessary. We're just going to use power from the PSOC. So use one jumper wire to connect the minus side of this power to ground on your PSOC. And use another jumper wire to connect the positive side of the power to VDD on your PSOC. Next, we have four pins here that are labeled IN1, IN2, IN3, and IN4. We're going to connect the other four jumper wires to these four pins. And then I'm going to take the wire that's connected to IN1 and I'm going to connect it to pin 1, 0 on the PSOC. Since we've already programmed the PSOC, you should notice that the A LED starts blinking off and on. If that A LED isn't blinking, you've done something wrong and you should check that right away. Next, take the wire that's connected to IN2 and connect it to pin 1, 1 on the PSOC. If you have that connected up correctly, the two LEDs A and B should start flashing. And you'll also notice that your stepper motor, when you hold it in your hand, you'll feel it like uh, clicking inside. That's happening because we're turning off and on two of the poles, and so it's trying to turn the shaft. It's not succeeding yet, but you should feel your stepper motor clicking. Next, take the wire that's connected to in 3 and connect it to pin 1, 2. And the C LED should start flashing. And then finally, take the wire connected to in 4 and connect it to pin 1, 3. At that point, all four of your LEDs should be flashing in sequence, and you should also notice that the shaft of the stepper motor is rotating. It's rotating fairly slowly, but it should be going fast enough that you can see it. If that's working for you, the next thing we're going to do is see if we can calculate how fast this stepper motor is rotating. We're going to do this calculation by doing a unit conversion. In our code, we've set each step of the stepper motor to take 10 milliseconds. In other words, we turn on one pin, wait 10 milliseconds, and then turn on the next pin. So we have 10 milliseconds per step of the stepper motor. And from the data sheet of this motor, we know that there are 2,048 steps in every revolution. That seems like a lot of steps in each revolution, and it is. This is achieved by having a gearbox inside of your stepper motor. There are actually fewer steps per revolution, but it's amplified to 2,048 through the gear ratio. Steps cancel out here, and this tells us that it should take 2,480 seconds, uh, milliseconds, in order to make one revolution. In other words, it should take 20.48 seconds to make one revolution. 
you can test this by running your motor and using a stopwatch to time the amount of time it takes to make one complete revolution. Try that and make sure it does take about 20 seconds to get all the way around once. Then see if you can come up with an equation that will allow you to enter the velocity and calculate the number of milliseconds that you need to wait at each step in order to achieve that velocity. In other words, go back up to the top of your code and create a variable. This variable will specify the speed of the motor that you want in units of RPM. Then create an integer called delay. Write an equation here to calculate delay based on velocity. Fill in what you get on this line of code after you derive this equation. Then put the delay here at each step. Test your code by entering a couple of different values for velocity and then timing the speed of your motor to make sure that the motor does move at the correct speed. Once you get this working, try something else. Create another variable here called direction. When direction is equal to 1, make it so that the motor will go forwards. And when direction is minus 1, make the motor move backwards. In other words, when direction is equal to 1, the motor should move in one direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise. And when direction is negative 1, the motor should move the other direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Once you've achieved this, there's one last task that I'd like you to try to accomplish. Let's create a float called angle. Angle will indicate the number of degrees that you would like the motor to turn. Let's say 90 degrees. Add some code to make the stepper motor stop after it has rotated the number of degrees typed in here. Once you get it working, try to change the angle to say 45 or 180 and see if it works. If it does work, your motor should stop turning after it has turned the number of degrees that you've typed in here.